I'm Batman. Okay, this is this is just a test. I want to see how well I can work a green screen with this not green screen. It's just a, a green tablecloth that I got from the dollar store. Now I'm really Batman. But maybe. If the green screen's working. Cloak of invisibility! Did it work? Am I visible yet? So as not promised, I'm going to do a review of Batwoman again. This is episode number two. I don't know how long I can keep this up. I get really busy doing other stuff, but I'm actually putting a review of the KG Beast on hold so that I can do this review. So you better damn well like it! Just kidding. Ah! Oh god! I put a spider underneath my mic and now it's... Oh my god. Ooh. Ooh, stay under my... Oh. Ah. Ah. I was literally setting up to record and this spider just crawled across my desk out of nowhere and it, I'm too busy to take it outside right now and it's winter, it'll probably die. So I'm trying to figure out what to do with it and I've put it underneath my microphone stand for now. I know it's not happy, but at least it's not dead. Anywho, so I watched episode two of Batwoman. I wasn't sure if I was gonna even continue on after the first review of the show, but I decided that I didn't watch any really of the season one of Batwoman, so I figured I would jump on and I'm going to commit to watch every single episode of Batwoman. It's the least I can do, considering I did tell everybody when I started this channel that there was going to be TV and movie reviews as well, and I've been kind of lacking on the TV reviews. And I don't just want to do Superman, so maybe I'll review episodes from Batwoman and also from Superman. But I warn you, my reviews are very disjointed, and there are many people that review things much, much better than me. It's just going to be more like me rambling about what I saw. And I took notes! And no, I'm not going to try and hang the notes underneath the camera this time so that I can read them, because that was a fail last time. So I'm just going to... I'm going to refer to my notes in this review. Okay, so... And this stuff, stuff probably won't be in any real order either. I'm just going to talk about stuff that happened in the show. Like, for example, uh, not Ruby Rose made an appearance in the episode, and then also Ruby Rose kind of made an appearance in the episode. There was some old footage where she was cornered in the uh, the sports diamond there, in the sports field, and she was, you know, getting pot shots taken on her before Daddy knew that that was his daughter. And there's also a previous scene that shows a past Yavisha, shows a past Ryan Wilder being assailed by some thugs in an alleyway trying to rob her and then finding out that she's completely flat broke. She doesn't even have any money on the debit card and the creditors are chasing her around. And so they're, they, they're, they're just going to shoot her and Batwoman, Kate Kane Batwoman, who's not really... I mean, it, we, you don't see her face, so it's clearly shot after the fact and they didn't get Ruby Rose to come in and shoot it. She comes in and kind of saves the day, but not before Yavisha kind of saves Batwoman as well by grabbing you know, a rogue batarang and whipping it at one of the thugs before the thug can shoot her. Although that doesn't really matter because the suit really is bulletproof, so she wasn't really in any danger to begin with. But it shows her spunk. You got spunk, kid. And that's what matters. That and having a bat suit if your name is Ryan Wilder. That's all you need. So one of the main points of this episode, though, really is they're trying to edge Yavisha into the role of Batwoman in a way that shows that she's worth it, and she, she should be in the role, and everyone's going to have this mutually beneficial arrangement until Kate Kane returns. And, but really, it's to show us, the, the, the viewers, that she's worthy of being in that role. So episode two, it's, it's not a terrible story, actually. Javisha doesn't really think of herself as Batwoman yet because of the events of episode one, where she decided that the suit, the symbol, was more important than her and her single-minded goal for revenge. But the events kind of push her back into the suit again, where there's all these protesters and they're protesting for their hero, for their hope, for their Batwoman again. And Yavisha, it, she, Batwoman sort of has to show up because she has to disperse the crowd because something very bad is going to happen because the crowd is there. We know that Alice, we find out that Alice is planning something very nasty. So Batwoman shows up, up on top of the the roof there, hands on hips, no, no, not hands on hips, hands down its side, and uh, makes an appearance and tells them all to disperse and go home. But Ryan Wilder isn't the only one who's shown up. Also, you have Alice who's shown up, and, and she's not happy. She has a full plan on intoxifying and killing all kinds of people in Gotham City. That's, that's why Ryan showed up, because now they're both here, and of course, because they're both there, there has to be a conflict, and so there's like, you might as well have actually put the bow, bow, all those old 66 stuff. That would actually make the scene cooler. 
honestly. But anyway, so they have their fight. They have to fight. And one of the main things that that Yavisha, that Ryan Wilder has to go through in this episode, is she really has to understand that Batwoman has a no-killing rule. And what's the one thing that Ryan Wilder wants more than anything? Revenge for the death of her mom. Right. The plant didn't make any uh, appearances in this episode, by the way. I wanted to see the plant. I wanted there to be a whole story arc with her and the plant. I thought that would have been kind of fun. No plant. However, Ryan Wilder has this punch-up, a la Batman 66, with Alice, and she's not really doing a very good job. <laughs> they're Like, they're pretty evenly matched, Alice and Ryan. But then, what happens? Alice is like, oh yeah? Look what I got. Kabam! I got a little thing in my hand here, a little button I push on it, and it will activate something called bats, and the bats will fly over, and then the bats are all filled with a nasty toxin, and they're going to start biting people, and then all the people are going to get sick and die. So then Ryan Wilder has a choice to make. Do I go after Alice, or do I try to save all the people from the weird toxin bats that are going to kill a bunch of people? In the end, she decides to go and save the people, which is the first real step that says, yeah, okay, maybe she deserves to be in the bat suit. She puts her own personal desire for revenge on the back burner and goes to save people. So while her and Luke, who is in her ear pierce, are trying to figure out how to get this big flock of bats, and the news is like, help, we're under attack by bats! Would anyone ever say that in real life? We're under attack by bats. That's just so weird. I mean, I suppose if the bats had machine guns strapped to their back, then you would say you're under attack by bats. But if there wasn't any machine guns or maybe laser beams, you'd probably just say, oh no, there's a flock of bats. Maybe we'll get rabies. Everyone duck. But no, everyone's panicking down below. And of course the bats are angry and rabid and biting people. Although I've, I've never seen bats actually bite people, just fly down and bite people. So, and there's no sign that the toxin actually makes anything become angry or more agitated. I mean, there were people that got bit by the bats that had it. And all it does is give you a bloody nose and red eyes and it'll eventually kill you, of course. That's the major downside. But they didn't display any sides of being any more aggressive than they would normally be. So why the bats are just flying around and biting people? Because they're trying to get to get to this. There is an echolocation device that has been hidden in a newspaper box and that's why Yavisha needed the whole, you know, the, the, the special vision, the sonar vision. What was it called again? I told you that this review was going to be completely disjointed. Anywho, so now she opens up the newspaper box. Funny that she didn't have to put a quarter in it to open up the box. I mean, usually you got to put something in there like a loony if you live in Canada to get the newspaper out because the paper isn't free. She opens up the box. She's got this echolocation and they're like, what are we going to do with it? And he's like, well... Maybe we, uh, maybe we should just destroy it, but then, and then she's like, no, you don't destroy it, Luke, you can't destroy it, because then you have all these bats just flying around, and, and they're just all over the city, we gotta get rid of the bats, and so, next scene, she's in the Batmobile, driving around with this echolocation in the passenger seat, all the bats are chasing her around, trying to follow this echolocation, and she's like, what do I do with it? I've got this car that goes really fast, but I'm gonna run out of gas, and I can't drive forever, and I got a whole flock of bats behind me, and I really hate bats, because she does, Yavisha actually doesn't like bats, she's a afraid of bats. And out of all the empty streets that she's driving around in Gotham City, a city that apparently never sleeps, kind of like New York City, the streets are miraculously mostly empty, she comes across a transport bus, a prisoner transport bus, where she gets out, she points the, get out of the bus, and she points the whole, the back grapple at the guy, and he's like, fine, I'll get out of the bus, even though he was clearly probably armed with an actual gun. He gets out of the bus, and then she runs inside, and she puts the echo location in the bus, and then she closes the door, and she runs to the back, and she opens up the back door, and she jumps out, and all the bats fly into the bus because that's where the echo location is and then she shuts the door and then she chucks an explosive under the bus and then she's gonna blow the bus is gonna blow but then she finds somebody who's a homeless lady living in a tent and she's like oh no I gotta go save her too and then she runs over to the homeless lady and she's all like and she puts the homeless lady underneath her cape and then the bus blows up and then she's all like Oh, thank you, Batwoman. And she's like, well, I'm not Batwoman. She's like, you are to me. Thus saving the city from all the intoxified bats. Not intoxified as in drunk. But they're, in, well, that's intoxicated, isn't it? All the intoxified bats. I understand how hard it must be to get through one of my reviews. What was the other big problem that had to be resolved? Oh, yeah, all the bats, because of that toxin, all the people that were getting bit, they were all getting sick and they were all going to die. And the hospital was becoming completely overrun. So they're like, how do we deal with this? But ta ding, da ding, da ding, Alice shows up miraculously and she's talking to her sister. Mary, she's talking to Mary, her sister. Remember, I'm new to the show. She's talking to Mary, her sister, and she's like, oh, by the way, here's some blood. It's actually your blood that I took from you and I'm giving it back to you. It's kind of like a re-gift. You can synthesize a cure from that blood. And then 
So the blood, to make a long story short, ends up getting into the hands of Hamilton something or other, and then they synthesize a cure overnight. And don't give Mary any of the credit, and wow, overnight they synthesized enough cure to cure hundreds of people. What the heck? Wouldn't the blood and the cure and everything have to be in a spinning machine spinning around in a circle, and that would take a long time to synthesize it, like more than just a matter of hours? Then again, this is a show about a girl in a bulletproof bat suit, uh, so we should just suspend disbelief altogether, pretty much for everything. I still wanted to see the plant in the episode, though. I missed that plant. So there you have it. All of the problems that are related to the bats have been wrapped up in a nice little bow. The bats have been drawn into a prisoner transport bus and exploded and turned into bat ash. And there's a cure that was synthesized so all the people that got bit by the bats won't die. Yay. I'm leaving out a lot of major details in this story because you really just need to go watch it. Like, there's a lot of story behind what I'm saying that I'm purposely leaving out because if I tell you everything that happens, then you won't... Who am I kidding? You would still have to watch it because this is so disjointed. Oh yeah, I remember when she got shot? Yeah, that's bothering her still too. I don't know why I put that at the end of the video. Anyway, I guess I'm done. So, thank you so much for watching everybody. Have yourself a super fantastic awesome DC day and I will see you with the next one. Take care! Uh, 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 uh. Bye. Oh, I've still got that spider. I've still got that spider I gotta deal with. Here's that spider I was telling you about. Oh! Yeah! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, did I kill it? No. I don't know. Okay, that's it. He just lives underneath my microphone.